Great news for Tesla. It seems that the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe adopted new regulations to approve vehicles with driver controls assistance systems. What does this mean? Well, put more simply, Tesla's full self-driving bid is about to come to Europe. Today, let's discuss the importance of this. How much will the global rollout of FSD impact Tesla, the business and the stock? When can we expect this to happen? And what about China? So today I've got Larry Goldberg joining joining us, and he's a uh, multi-entrepreneur. Thank you so much, Larry. Thank you, Herbert. I want to hear from you. Uh, obviously, FSD is very, very important to Tesla. We've been waiting for this to happen. You've been talking about what you know what would happen for Tesla if FSD becomes a global rollout, not just Europe, but maybe Australia, China, and others. So I want to hear more about your thinking about that. So first, let's report on the news. I'm going to give a shout out to Florian Menderop. Um, he is uh, the person in uh, Europe who's in following FSD very, very closely. And uh, it, what was his? It's, what is his company? It's called um, Gr Mr. Green. Mr. Green. Yep. And Mr. Green is a leasing company. They bought, I don't know, I think 3,500, maybe more. 5,000. 5,000 5, Teslas. They own 5,000 Teslas and they're leasing it out to to uh, to consumers, but their big idea is they have FSD in every one of them. And so they plan to be a fleet manager for RoboTaxi when it's coming and it's looking like it's finally here. So he's excited. FSD Europe is coming to Europe. <laughs> FSD beta is coming to Europe in 2025. The new regulation is adopted and he'll keep us more. So here's what happened. FSD beta set for European launch. So the regulatory approval is coming from this body called United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. They adopted a new regulation. It is for the ability for um, beta versions like uh, driver assistance, driver control assistance systems. So it's uh, it's not yet autonomy, but there it's a step forward. Uh, what, do you th what do you think about all this, uh, Larry? Well, just to put a fine point on what the regulations have been adopted is they've been adopted for assistance software not for self-driving and there will be another i guess release later down the line for drive for actual autonomy but the driver assistance will be at the same level as we're currently experiencing with fsd beta um, it's interesting that it's a united nations agency and not a european agency um yeah. You know, the levels of bureaucracy in this thing <laughs> in Europe are just staggering, just staggering. But, you know, here in the United States, it's really state by state because the states actually control the traffic regulations in, you know, uh, on the roads. So, yeah, I mean, this is a very important step because it does mean that Tesla will be able to market full self-driving in its current state. That is to say, at a driver assistance level um, in, in the European market. And, you know, Tesla has taken their own route here. They've definitely been leading the, the charge globally. Um, they haven't been as active in and as uh, advanced in non-US markets simply because Elon has said, and, and several other uh, members of the team have said that there are just so many uh, variations in the road conditions, the road markings, the, the, the traffic laws uh, from country to country uh, that it, the, the variations are too large. They want to conquer um, FSD here in the United States before they expand to other countries. But I think... You know, we, we've seen the success of FSD V12, um, at least the limited release that there has been. And I now believe that we are beginning to close in on a level of control that, um, you know, is very advanced and will allow uh, the FSD to be to 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 release quite soon you know I, about a year ago i was on your uh, program about this time last year actually i was first uh, interviewed by you and we talked about fsd and i said two to three years and that was exactly a year ago 
And now I think we're one to two years away. I think we're on track. And, uh, and so I think this is the time. And Europe is a great market for it. Uh, they have a lot, I mean, a lot of fine roads. Yes, there are a lot of tiny little roads, a lot of cities, tough, tough, you know, driving in cities and, and tough driving on some of those small country roads, particularly in, you know, the mountains of Italy and, and southern Europe. But there's definitely a huge, huge amount of freeway driving in Europe. And, um, and FSD will do extremely well there. Right. No, I mean, uh, I'm so glad that we have version 12 neural net because this is the one that could actually learn and be able to learn faster than if it was uh, coding constraint. Would you have to have a bunch of engineers to then retrofit, not retrofit, but change what we've, you know, how it works in the US. And now you got France, now you got, you know, London and every one of these places are so, so different, like you were saying. Um, so, the, you know, these 12 can figure this out. So they need to go uh, step by step, country by country. And as we'll share a little bit later here, there might be a chance here, it looks like that uh, FSD beta will be rolled out in October, not not 2025. It can come sooner. Um, We'll see yeah, I think that true. date is a bit iffy, but you know, let's not fix on a particular month. Uh, all yeah. we, I think, it's sufficient to say that this year looks very promising, and if not the by the end of this year, certainly by the early next year, I think these are far too complex. These issues are far too complex to pin down on a date, on a day, on a month, yeah. and then people start, you know, get yeah. getting very disappointed. You know, and, and let me say that the variation across Europe is not as great as the variation generally across countries. So when you travel in Europe, there are differences in language, in signs, uh, the language on signs. There are some differences in sign methodology, but that has become, that is be, being coalesced, uh, you know, almost on a monthly, annual basis. And so, Ultimately, there will be a degree of uniformity across Europe, but there's sufficient uniformity right now. And the roads in Europe, for the most part, the main roads, for the most part, are really good. And so I think that I think FSD will do extremely well there. OK, and then um, I want to talk to you also about, uh, you know, that like you said, it's not just the regulation. OK, finally, they, you can test out FSD beta. And by the way. A uh, 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 what is it? Autopilot, but it's also that they need the compute. They need to have enough compute to be able to take all that new video that needs to come in. And we'll talk to you about that. Let me just complete the story here of what exactly has been approved. So the adoption of the regulation not only paves the way for the introduction of FSC beta in Europe, it also allows Tesla to reinstate the cer certain autopilot features that had previously been restricted. So even just that alone will make the Tesla cars uh, much more feature rich uh, for European drivers and for another reason for them to buy Teslas. So the, the, the requiring the driver to activate the turn signal to manually trigger what were previously automatic lane changes, limiting how far the steering wheel can turn while on autopilot. These are likely to reappear before the release of FSE beta. And then, so when can we expect to launch FSE beta in Europe? And so according to this body, they need to, Tesla needs to submit a approval form and you know information for them to approve. But according to Tesla Scope and others, this information has already been prepared. It's not something you know they can do earlier. And then that's where the Tesla Scope is thinking maybe it can come, even come sooner, as soon as October, in some European countries. Um, and then they'll be able to you know once it's released, they'll do, go slow. They'll be able to monitor the performance and provide updates to the regulators. And then, um, yeah, this is what they said. We've also been told there's a chance FSD beta may be preliminary release this October. And then they'll also be transitioning from hardware three to hardware four later this year at Giger Berlin, now that the regulation is being adopted. Well, a couple of things here. The first is training capacity. Um, you know, Elon has told us recently, just in the last few days, that their training capacity limitations will be greatly relaxed uh, very shortly. And we were given a 
graph of mm -hmm. the uh, implementation of training capacity, and it really is exponential. It rises very rapidly this year. So October would seem to be a relatively good date given the rate of increase of training capacity because it's clear there's going to have to be, as you said, a lot of training on the European loads. I'm sure they have a huge quantity of data from Europe already in, in, in the warehouse, in their, in their data warehouse. It's just a question of training of it. And training capacity has been very limited up to now. And that's been the principal reason why they've stuck to the US and US only. Now, I'm going to Europe uh, next month. Uh, in fact, I leave on the 1st of April and I have a uh, Model 3 uh, with the current level of autopilot on it for the three months that I'll be there. And I do a lot of traveling. I'm going from the southwestern corner of Europe to the northeastern corner of Europe um in in a three or four day road trip in the middle of this period so i'll 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 be able to report on the state of autopilot and the state of european roads all the way from spain to norway so it will be a good um it, it'll be a good um experience because you know in a year's time or two years time depending on the rollout I'll be able to go and experience actual FSD and, and get to compare the differences. Wow. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> That's great. Because you you obviously know Europe very well. Uh, so what do you think about you know the take rate of FSD beta? You know, just people buying it as part of their car, paying the monthly fees. What's the take rate do you think that will happen over the years here in uh, Europe? Yeah, you know, I'm one of those guys who've been critical of the pricing of FSD. I think that uh, FSD um, has been, it's been priced, I think, at a point to limit its, its use. I wonder whether we wouldn't have been better off pricing FSD at a fraction of its current price to encourage adoption and uh, broaden the use of it uh, and, and also broaden the um, base. You know, pricing of um, SaaS software, software as a service, which is functionally what FSD is, uh, is a very interesting su uh, uh, subject and I've studied it very much in the past couple of years um, because the pricing adoption curve is you know, it's very dramatic at the lower levels. So that's how I would have done it. Once you're at this level, it's really hard to climb down. It's really negative to climb down. It's a lot easier to climb up with adoption. So um, I, I would hope that the pricing in Europe is more reflective of, of a, you know, a, an aggressive adoption cycle rather than a regressive adoption cycle. Not a popular opinion. No, actually, I think I agree with you because um, I think that they, like you said earlier, they purposely kept it high for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, it's not ready, right? So they don't want to get, to believe that the whole masses should be buying it quite yet. They want just the pure fans to be able to do it. And I think that obviously it's a signal, right? This thing is worth a lot of money. I don't want to price it low. Yeah. They will lower it. Mm -hmm. I think it's an Elon factor. I think it's yeah. the latter rather than the former. I think Elon yeah. wants to create a halo around it. Yeah. You know, is absolutely single-mindedly focused on the value of, of FSD. Mm -hmm. You know, very often in these things, Elon's um, philosophies appear completely counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. And then in the long arc of the product he's proven correct <laughs> oh, excuse me I have no, you. um so so you know my 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 criticisms are just this you know simplistic mm -hmm. take and it's it's hard to it's hard to gainsay uh elon's perspective but 
Nonetheless, uh, I, I agree with you. I think it would be really good to introduce it at the lower figure and on a monthly basis. So whereas we're at about $200 a month right now in the U.S., um, the nice thing about the U.S. Uh, $200 a month is you can switch it on and switch it off. Mm -hmm. um, in, in Europe, you know, my recommendation for for the level of FSD that they're going to permit, I would charge somewhere in the fifty to seventy-five dollar range mm -hmm. um, on, on on a longer term contract, you know, one year mm -hmm. contract. Mm -hmm. And I think I think it'll get widespread adoption, and that widespread adoption will lead, I think, mm -hmm. to a much broader acceptance. Yeah, could be wrong. You know, it's just my idea. Love it. Yeah, no, I agree with that. That makes sense. Have you been watching the progress of FSE version 12? Did you see the James Dalma reaction? Oh, to it? yeah. You know, I, yeah. so, you know, I, I'm amazed. I'm, I'm just, um, I'm just, I, I can't be more pleased uh, that James took the ride um, and that he was able to comment on it. And I was astonished at the ride because my experience with the current level of FSD is that in these uh, small mm -hmm. uh, suburban roads, and boy, those were small. Uh, they were almost no. very urban and not suburban. Mm -hmm. But those small suburban roads, it doesn't do that great. In my in my neighborhood, I can't get I, I often said I can't get out or into my neighborhood. Once I'm out of my neighborhood, I do a much better. But I was amazed at the quality of the driving. It wasn't so much the edge cases it was able to ace. It was the quality of the driving it was so human-like. That was the thing that I think so many people commented on. And so I, you know, I think these guys are doing it just a fantastic job of, of you know, testing it and, you know, taking it coast to coast and taking, you know, he took Fazad out yesterday um, and, you know, James the other day, a really, really good test. I'm okay. very envious yeah. of these guys doing this cross-country trip. What was your, uh, what's your interpretation of, let me just share this now, like when uh, Elon said, when he replied to uh, James, I'm going to share the screen here. So James uh, Dalma is a well-known machine learning expert. He was taken on a ride um, by by uh, Bradford Ferguson of Rebellionaire and then James replied this, version 12 is going to be over 100 times reduction in interventions compared to version 11. This is not an incremental upgrade. It's a leap forward. His actual post is much longer. I'm not going to go through that right now. But Elon replied to that saying, thanks. That, that is an accurate assessment. Training computers currently are limiting factor, but that issue is being resolved fast. And in a previous post, he said that he said how the training compute, he thinks by the end of this year, they'll have enough for FSD that they'll have surplus that they'll be able to use for other kinds of video generation, much like OpenAI Sora, that you can just give it a sentence, it'll produce any kind of video. They can't do that yet, but they're able to do that with driving. You give it a sentence and it'll be able to re recreate that image or that video of the car driving, and you can't tell the difference between that and what you think has just been recorded by the eight cameras. Yeah, we've well, actually seen we've actually seen a snippet of that already. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. I, look, training is you know there's the famous paper that started the whole uh, large language model, and the paper was called "Attention is all you need." I, I would say training is all you need. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, I mean that that's the magic. I've said it often. I'll say it again. This whole journey is one of, you know, steep climb up a very steep mountain, and we don't know how if there's another mountain behind this mountain, mm -hmm. and how steep that mountain is. And by the way, we mm -hmm. may get to the top of the mountain, see that there's a steep mountain range beyond us, and yet 
we may still be on the wrong mountain range. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't, these are unknowable factors. Mm -hmm. Only when we get to the top of this particular mountain, what Elon calls and what is popularly known as the local maximum, which ironically is actually a depth, but that's another subject. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, the point that I'm trying to drive at is the level of confidence right now may not be warranted because we really don't know. And when we, and we'll only know when we know. And the other issue is, you know, what are the key um, maneuvers that still remain to be done? This FSD 12, version 12, has solved so many maneuvers that we thought were going to be difficult to be solved. Stunningly, mm -hmm. the ease of which it decides to do a U-turn to, to take a particular path, the um, smoothness in which it tackles, uh, the smoothness and elegance with which it tackles the roundabouts. These are two really difficult maneuvers, just apart from many others, that it seems to have aced, you know, without any sort of step change, uh, uh, sort of a uh, multi-step change. It's just done one huge step almost instantly. So that's what gives us a lot of confidence. And clearly James has got a lot of confidence and he is, you know, of us all, he's probably easily the, the most experienced and knowledgeable uh, in this field. And so I defer to him, but I still have that um, reservation. Uh, built of, you know, almost three quarters of a century of experience with software. You just don't know what you don't know. Yeah, I agree. Of course, that makes sense. Uh, what gives me, you know, a little bit of uh, hope here is that not only Elon, right, but multiple engineers from the autopilot team has said the same thing, which was, yeah. which is that we are now at a point where with version 12, it really is just compute constrained, and that's our limiting factor. So I think from their statements, they believe that the neural net, which is this end-to-end, uh, -end, you know, uh, AI that's learning, it's coding itself. There, it appears that it can learn anything as long as you throw it data and you throw it compute power. And like I said, it may may come into a local maximum, but right now. This is what they're saying. Currently, it's our limiting factor, and this issue is going to be resolved fast. We will know. Very yeah. soon, by the end, before the you know before the end of this year, yeah. if that compute that they throw at it is truly going to be enough, or they're going to need to throw even more compute, more data. I don't think the limit, the limitation, if there is one, I don't think the limitation is going to be compute power. Mm. I think compute power is eminently achievable, mm -hmm. and I think they're building that compute power now. I you know I really don't know the facts. This is all my guesswork based upon experience. Yeah. And James clearly has a lot more experience in this field than I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what I would say is that um, we just don't know. I I'll tell you what gives me pause. What gives me pause is that the stronger these lang large language models get, the more their hallucinations are hidden, mm. but exist. Mm -hmm. yep. And sometimes with horrific results. Um, and, you know, you only have to look at the Gemini yeah. rollout to see yeah. how it's so difficult for humans not to put their ore in and not to get involved. And, and the catastrophic results yeah. when they do. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think we haven't begun to explore this whole world, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, of, of these, of this approach in general. Look, we know that human beings lie. Everybody lies. It, it's built into the human evolution. And sometimes it's absolutely necessary. If, you know, if right. you look at yep. 
anyway, I don't want to get into philosophy now, but we yeah. know that human beings lie. Now the question is, do yeah. large language models, yeah. foundational models, do they lie? I think the obvious answer is yes, mm -hmm. they must lie if they are in fact to achieve you know, any degree of sentience. Mm -hmm. So that gives us some pause. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter that human beings lie. They seem to drive okay for the most part, although they do kill a lot of people. Um, so maybe it's okay. Anyway, these are philo philosophical issues that are probably deeper than we need to go into right no, I, I, that's a that's a good point, right? So we're training this FSE twelve uh, neural nets, and uh, you're pointing out that LLMs they have their hallucinations where they they will say something as if it's absolutely true and it's wrong, and then this could happen too, right? This car will decide, you know what? Why why do I need to stop at the red light? There's nobody here. I'm going to go yeah, ahead and go straight. Go yeah. Who 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 who? You know what I mean? I mean, it's being trained on good drivers, and all good drivers are stopping there. But at some point, like you say, maybe this thing will I just... I have a question for you. <laughs> Tell me, in a very quiet moment of the day, be it midnight or mm -hmm. very early in the morning, and you're at a red light... Oh, let me tell you the story. Let me tell you the story. Light. Yeah. Uh, so I had uh, my, my four young nieces and nephews and my children, two children, two nieces and nephews, they were like eight years old, 10 years old, they were in the back of my car. We had to drop my father off and it was already one o'clock in the, you know, like late midnight, one o'clock. And I went to a stoplight. There was nobody there. I went straight. And of course they screamed going, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I'm like trying to teach them the lesson <laughs> that there is the intent of the stoplight, which is to prevent accidents, but it's okay to break a law I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I think you are. You've you've basically pulled it out for me, right? That yeah, I'm gonna go and drive right through that because there's an intent of why the red lights there to prevent accidents. But there's no accidents gonna happen now. I don't need to follow this. <laughs> and, and so and so we can imagine that over time, FSD will do the same. Yeah, if it's truly a you know neural net. Yeah. Anyway, that's just my point. Yeah. I I mean I. I am yeah. so confident of FSD, but I raise these mm -hmm. cautions. Yeah. I stack these cautions because my experience with software is that if anything can go wrong, it will it's gonna go wrong. squared. Sure. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, uh, Larry. Follow him at Tesla Larry on X. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.